Okay, so this, this brings up another great point that you and I have talked about before. But um, when you're talking to somebody, especially a young person who's maybe, you know, they're going to start out, they want to play an instrument or something, there's this concept of natural talent, right, that we right. run into all the time. And I mean, I've even, you know, I've seen interviews with people and they'll be talking to some virtuoso violinist or something like that. And the interviewer is saying, oh, you have such a gift. You know, you have such a natural gift for this, you know. And I, I, that's always bothered me because I feel like, oh, you're just discrediting the decades of work oh, that, no. that have gone yeah. into this, you know. But I mean, do you, do you feel that natural talent, I mean, is that a, a myth? Is that a thing? I mean, what's your position on that? I think... In all honesty, I think it's mostly a myth. Okay. Um, I think there's multiple reasons for that. I mean, I think there is people who have, people do have, uh, and, you know, in neuro, like, uh, I don't know, what do you call it? Uh, like neurology? Is that is that the name of the field? Sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. whatever. It, anyway, it is to us. I'm yeah. actually reading yeah. a book right now that's right. about, uh, like, music and the effect on the brain and, and various, mm. and, like, how uh, a guy who was struck by lightning suddenly became obsessed with Chopin and other piano music. And, and he'd never written music in his whole life. And he suddenly dedicated his, in his 40s, right. dedicated his life to writing music. So I think there are things that different people are going to have different degrees of interest or passion about music. And it, there may actually be a neurological reason for that. Mm -hmm. But actually, as far as talent is concerned, I do believe that most of it is, is actually passion. So I think okay. that uh, it's the the willingness, the motivation to practice. Somebody like one of those virtuoso violinists, uh, if he's just mechanically or she is just mechanically practicing for all those years, they're going to end up with just the same technical skill as, as somebody who was said to have natural talent early right. on, if they, if they didn't have any, right? But uh, but if one is more passionate than the other, that's going to come through in the end result, right? Like sure. uh, so, if they do, it's, that's this thing. Like if you're a kid and you're being forced to practice. 10 hours a day, let's say, um, or whatever, some ridiculous amount, then you will become incredibly technically skilled, but you're going to hate music, right? right. Um, and that's going to come through versus if you love music, but let's say you don't practice as often as maybe you should. Uh, well, you know what I mean? I mean you get the general yeah. idea. But yeah. I will say this with students of mine. Um, one of the things I noticed is that kids would come in who you would say were naturally talented, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and you know, they come in, they pick it up rather easily. And then you'd have other kids who really wanted to play and they just were terrible at first. Like they couldn't get the most basic stuff. Mm -hmm. What I always found is if both of those students stuck with it for a few years, the one who came in with virtually no natural talent would always uh, pass the, uh, the supposedly talented kid. Right. And I think it's because the talented kid, it came, seemed to come easily at first. So you didn't really build that need to, uh, to and, put the work in. Right, the, the work ethic that's required. Exactly. And the other student really wanted it. And they, from the very beginning, they had to work. Yeah. And so they just maintain that. And so at a certain point, I think um, the talent becomes a crutch. Like it actually mm. becomes that's a problem. It, you know, the, the, I'll say, you know, I, I, maybe the jury's out on that for me. But, sure, yeah. uh, but I will say I do think that, uh, that there does reach a point where it's irrelevant. Uh, yeah. As far as skill and all of that, you, if you put 10,000 hours, that's what the studies say, right. once you reach the 10,000 hour practice mark, then any of that stuff from starting out, supposedly, and I would agree with this from my experience, has no bearing on the end result. Um, so you start out with talent, you don't start out with talent. If you put the 10,000 in, you're, in this, you're basically in the same ballpark. Um, so I would say it's mostly myth, but yeah. I think there is a, you know, there's some predisposition. People might have you know, predisposition. I mean, I think something that gets overlooked a lot of the time, um, you know, when we, when we talk about the you know, the, the greats, you know, in guitar, you know, guys like Ingve and Paul Gilbert and Steve Vai and people like that. Um, a lot of people tend to think of them as being naturally talented. But if you look at those guys, their histories, every one of them at some point in their life had a massive chunk of time. Right. Where they were just doing nothing but working on their chops, you know. Absolutely. And usually it's in their teens or something like right. that. You know, it's when they have a lot of free time. Right. But, um, yeah, I feel like that's... That's totally it's overlooked. So, oh, it's, and it's yeah. so important. And that's where you're getting credit. Right. Because if you're just talented, like, like, and this is a joke that I, I've had with various people, but the idea about like how someone's just gifted. Now, if you had somebody who, who had actually was as good as the 10,000 hour mark without having done anything, that's right. scientifically fascinating, sure. right? Absolutely. Like that is bizarre. Like that's amazing. Um, but it, it's, that person doesn't get any credit for that, right? It's just a fluke. Yeah. So if, uh, but not that it actually exists, but 
let's just say that it does. But I mean, you could even have like a savant who has that ridiculous ability that just you know happens. But they still have to you know know what to do. It's not like that information is is just in their brain, right? right. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's the thing. Person with with uh, if you just say that someone's gifted. Uh, if it was just a gift where they like they didn't have to do any work for it, mm -hmm. then they, there, there's no credit to them, right? And if you right. if you believe that, then what do they do to to, to earn that, right? Um, so if uh, uh, but when somebody puts that work in, which is what they do, they deserve credit for that work. And so somebody yeah. like Ingve or Paul Gilbert, they deserve the credit. And so when you say that's just a gifted person. Sure, it's easier for a person to be able to write it off. Of course, and yeah. So, they, so, well, I could never do that, so I don't have to worry about putting the work in, right? And I think that's a big motivator. I think people yeah. like that idea that you can just write them off as gifted, and that means, well, I, couldn't, I could never do that, so I don't have to worry about trying. Right. And I think that that's a big reason why people like that idea, uh, and I think it makes people uncomfortable to look at that and go, I could do that if I wanted to. Right. I would take it one step further and say, well, maybe you just don't want to. So right. that's fine. Yeah. You know, uh, but again, I'm getting off on a tangent. No, no, no. That's, that's totally <laughs> legitimate stuff. And yeah, I mean, obviously the, the uh, psychology of why people pursue different things is, you know, we could talk about that for right. hours, you know, but.